What is up guys, Coach Joe here at Garage De La Swole, AKA Meat De La Muscle, AKA Swole De La Gains. I don't speak Spanish, but I speak Gains. Cicada gang checking in, Cicada gang checking in. Actually today we have the lawn mowers, so I picked an awesome time to film this video. In this video, we're gonna cover my thoughts on the blowing up influencer did he want to be an influencer? Did he not want to be an influencer? Sam Sulek. And this is actually something I talked about on the podcast with Dave Tate on my latest collaboration when I went to Elite FTS. Going to be honest, guys. Going to be very honest. I did not know anything about this guy. Didn't know his background or what the rage was about him. And for me personally, I really don't follow anybody else on YouTube besides my friends. So if there's stuff that's trending or going on, usually I know nothing about it. And when I get these type of videos that I'm doing, it's because someone either brought it to my attention and here we are. So I pretty much live under a rock when it comes to actually what's happening in the industry, but I digress. So Dave originally wanted my thoughts on Sam and we could talk about it on the podcast. And my response was, I really don't know much about him, but I'll watch some videos and we can see where the conversation goes. Right off the bat, right off the bat, saw this dude, who I think he's in his 20s, early 20s, and I was a bit jealous of his genetics. I saw his physique and I was like, that dude looks amazing. And he also talked about doing incline bench for his massive chesticles. And there's like a 99% chance I've been doing incline bench because hell, if I can get a chest that looks like that, mmm, mmm. But it just goes to show you that me being in the game for as long as I have, watching somebody, hearing them say something, weighs into whether or not I'm gonna do it. But as I'm watching his videos, and I think the big viral one is his eating, where he is just intaking a copious amount of chocolate milk and French toast crunch, which is delicious. 1,000 calories in the milk jug. Let's see how many. That's 64 grams of fat. And there's been a ton of controversy, and when you type his name into YouTube, you see all of these big name people in the industry giving their thoughts, their input, whether or not what he's doing is right, concerns for his health, his training technique, etc. And to be honest, once again, I did not watch any of those videos, so I don't know what they said, whether it was clickbait or not. But I am here to tell you, after originally watching the eating video, the thoughts in my head from the exact impression was, man, this dude is potentially screwing himself up. He is definitely gonna have to learn down the road to change a few things. Man, this guy is probably on a crap ton of drugs. Man. Blah, 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 blah. And I definitely had a, not so negative, but almost like, dude, I wish that I could just talk to you based on what I've heard from other people and what they've done based on what I've done and just try to bestow a little bit of wisdom to help put you on the right track. That was my initial thought process when watching this. On top of that, I also coach high school athletes. So not only am I a strength and conditioning coach for high schoolers, I coach the sport of lacrosse at the high school level. And what I have found is when I go and talk to the kids, they're always bringing up whatever's trending. A couple years ago, I was a liver king. Then we had Andrew Tate all the time. And they'll come up to me and they, they take a lot of what these people say as the gospel. So my job is kind of to, one, allow them to feel comfortable enough to talk to me about it and then give my input, not tell them exactly what they should do, but maybe try to think about things differently. So I guarantee when I go in in a, in a week or two to work with the kids in the weight room, they're probably gonna bring up Sam Sulik, what he's eating, how he's training, and what my thoughts are about it. And then I started to think this. If Sam is over 21, which I am assuming he is, he is a grown ass man, okay? He can fight and serve his country, he can go watch rated R movies, he can drink alcohol, he can get cigarettes, he can do everything an adult can do. And that is up to him to make those decisions. I can't sit here and try to parent him 
or be his daddy <laughs> because I'm not. He's going to make those decisions and that's fine because he is able and has the authority to do so. So if there's a bunch of people that are trying to just slam stuff down this guy's throat, right? It doesn't matter necessarily what you say because he's going to do whatever he's going to do. And then I started thinking this. If I went back when I was 21 and showed you guys how I was training, how I was eating, the mistakes that I was potentially making and put that out on the internet, I would have all sorts of ridicule. And that got me thinking with this whole social media, right? The, the lens of everybody being able to see everything you do. You are never going to be able to make everybody happy. Even if this kid had a perfect diet or quote unquote perfect diet, perfect training, right? There's still going to be somebody who's going to critique you because when you have all those eyes on you, like I said, you are not going to make everybody happy. There, there's just going to be criticism no matter what. And to be honest with you, he's having major success. I'm making a video about him. Tons of other people are making videos about him. This is only going to further grow whatever his goals are or his viewers or his subscribers, his revenue. This is only going to help boost him up. It's almost like that any press is good press. Unless you molest a kid, that ain't good. Oh snap! And then to take a step further, this guy has probably been training for several years, okay? But he's still pretty young, relatively. And there's so much for him to learn. So right now, he's experimenting. He's doing what he can with what he's got. And I'm sure if he sticks with it for the long term, he's going to continue to progress. He's going to continue to get better. And then he can maybe look back and say, yeah, I probably would have changed this. I wouldn't have done this. Or I got advice from so-and-so who I really respect. And this is what we changed. And one of my biggest issues that I talk about, and I think I talk about on the podcast, is everybody is searching for perfection, right? This is a 21-year-old man who is obviously very passionate about training. He looks the part, he's putting the work in, but if we all started training with the perfect program, right, the perfect nutrition, where do we go from there, okay? It's just like, for example, I always told people about the gym when I had the gym. If I started the gym, with all the bells and whistles, the sickest facility known to man, right when the doors open, well, where do I go from there, right? I think it's, it's cooler and it's better to track the journey, right? Starting, if you watch this channel, go all the way back, okay? I started with nothing. I was getting out of college. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And then as you follow that journey, you see where I'm at today. If you watch my training from where I started and then see where it's at today, I've made a lot of changes. I've learned a lot of things. I've made a ton of mistakes. And if we didn't have a story, right, then there'd be no point in tuning in to watch it. We watch movies for the story arc. If you just watched continuous movies where the good guy or whatever you want to deem the person as is consistently just winning, 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 nonstop, it gets boring. It's not entertaining, okay? We want to see somebody who starts from, you know, a baseline level of something. We want to see somebody who hits adversity. We want to see him overcome that adversity. It's the hero's journey. So whenever I'm watching people or even myself creating content, those are the things that I think about. But like I said, it's so easy for us to hop on there and ridicule somebody, pick them apart, right? It's great for a clickbait title. It's great for the views, etc. But we have to be able to rewind, we have to be able to take a breath and assess the situation. How would you feel if everybody watched what you ate? How would you feel if everybody watched your train? How would you feel if everybody expected perfection out of you when you just started? I don't know, I'm just here to talk about it and bring up those sorts of questions and have a conversation about it. I also don't personally know this guy, okay? We saw one day of eating. What does it look like throughout the week? What does it look like over the month? Okay, what is his training like? over the entire year. There's so many unknown variables that we need more information on to really have a well put together assessment of what he's actually doing and if it's a detriment to his health and his training. But here's the thing, even if it was, does it matter? We can only say so much because at the end of the day that person's gonna do what they're gonna do. And like I said, he's a grown ass adult, that's up to him. Hell, when I look back and think about the bulking I did, man, 
was I just pounding in food, making quote unquote mistakes that I think is all just part of the learning process. And I do think it's natural to do those things because you have to learn from whatever you did in the past to improve and go up in the future. Now, the one thing that I will say, and this isn't that it's right or that it's wrong, it's just that I work with kids, like I said, in the weight room and on the lacrosse field, and I do think you need to have some sort of responsibility knowing that there are others watching you. So it doesn't mean that you have to come out and say everything that you're doing, but I would put caveats to certain things where say things like, hey, this is what I'm doing. It's for me personally. I'm not telling you to do this, but here's what I'm doing. Because if you don't say those things, then people do take it verbatim and maybe it's not what's optimal for them. Once again, they're gonna do what they're gonna do and they're gonna learn to find out. But for him specifically, I think his audience is a lot younger of an audience and it's just something we need to be mindful of. He may be doing things, extracurriculars, not saying he is or isn't, I'm just saying if he was, that allow him to eat and train a certain way. And if the audience isn't knowing of that or doing that, it gives us a little bit of a skewed perception on what's potentially possible or what they should do as individuals. Now we got the blower, he's blowing. Doing a nice blow job. Five hours later. So I'm not gonna jump on the bandwagon of trashing this guy. There's obviously things that need more context to. I just wanted to give a different take on it. And by talking to Dave on the podcast, which I really suggest you guys do because we dive deeper into it, I think that it is a nuanced topic. And I do truly believe that if he continues to stick with his training, then he will learn over time. Okay, the perspective that he will have in 10 years will be different than it is now, and that's where growth is at. I think his brand or whatever he's trying to do in the fitness space will continue to blow up if that's what he chooses, and if not, who cares? He's just having fun, he's doing his thing, he seems like a genuine guy. I've seen a lot of people and personalities that are different off camera and on camera, and he seems like he just loves training, and for the most part, I think he's bringing positivity to his audience, He's probably motivating more people to train. He's probably putting himself out there. Uh, and like I said, just promoting more good than bad. That's always at the end of the day where I think, well, yeah, maybe I don't agree with everything, but are they, are they putting out more good than bad? So I'll close this out by saying he looks like a majestic ass unicorn. Shout out dope t-shirt. And he seems like he is very passionate about what he's doing. He seems genuine with his intentions. I'm sure, like I said, as time goes on, things will change or people in the industry that are very well known and respected will reach out to him and offer him guidance. And I'm excited to see where he goes. But at the end of the day, guys, no matter what you do, no matter who you are, you will be criticized for anything if the spotlight is on you. I'll probably get criticized for this video, down in the comment sections, and that's fine. I just look at it as if I am putting out more good than harm, and am I able to have a conversation that could maybe change your perspective or open up a conversation for further dialogue. I appreciate your time, guys. If you're looking to support the channel, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and then comment down below. I love having discussion with everybody who gets involved with the comments, and it just kind of makes us all grow. Okay, we can take our opinions and viewpoints, possibly change them, but we're having open and honest conversation, and that's what I really appreciate. On top of that, we do have a ton of different ways to purchase programs. So we have the programming app, which has 21 programs on there. By the time you watch this video, I'm sure there'll be more. We also have program templates a la carte, so if you wanna do a one-time purchase of a template, you're more than welcome to. I also have a couple slots open for one-on-one -on -one coaching, more of a premium cost, uh, but I don't take that many of them and I really give a ton of my effort and energy into delivering max amount of results for the clients that I work with. And then we also have the Patreon. So the Patreon is $10 a month. What you get with the Patreon is content that no one sees on any of my social media, a lot of behind the scenes stuff and programs, 
things that I have created, like PDFs on certain topics with training. There's also a lot of stuff that has to deal with fortifying the mind. So highly encourage you guys to check out the Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And that's all I have. So thank you so much for watching. Stay a lean, mean, strength, health machine. And I'll catch up with you guys next time. Peace.